Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a short story because it is Short Story Tuesday, uh, and I want to focus on a short story from an author that I've talked about before, and one that is about a workplace romance. I am referring to From A to Z by Susan Glaspell, uh, which was published in a 1909 uh, edition of um, American, a, a magazine or journal of some sorts. For those who don't know, Susan Glaspell is an American author uh, who uh, most frequently, like, she's, he, she's from Iowa, which um, is is fascinating. I've talked about her on this channel before, so again, I don't, I don't need to go into, into, into great detail. Um, and the Iowa connection is I was raised in Iowa, so it's always good to see authors from that place. Uh, she was a journalist at first, um, talking about the the elite in in Davenport, Iowa, uh, before moving on to writing and opening opening up our own publishing house, getting some pretty famous people published in her time. Uh, I've talked I, I've talked about her on this channel before in uh, Jury of Her Peers. A lot of her work is frequently talked about in the American public uh, school system uh, because she gives very clear examples of, of certain ideas. Um, uh, the a Jury of Her Peers is actually one of my most viewed videos, which I um, I attribute to the fact that uh, it's 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 about like a a very um, easy to see example of uh, misogyny and um, you know uh, ethical decisions and whatnot. I encourage you to go to, to go read that short story because it is pretty excellent, probably one of the best that I've read for this channel. Uh, but without further ado, let's talk about from A to Z, which spoiler alert, I did enjoy quite quite a lot. Um, I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So from A to Z focuses on, I believe, Edna Willard. She is uh, an idealistic writer, having just finished her educational experience at a, at a university in Chicago. Uh, and she wants to work in a publishing house, uh, operating her own, although she has to work in, in one uh, initially. Her professors get her uh, work in a publishing house, but it's a very questionable kind of sketchy one uh, that operates outside of a um, of a factory that it kind of shares like a space with a a, a patent medicine office um, which so frequently you know gave out false cures during that time so she's right to have her uh, have her, her her questions or like have um, like um, be su be suspect of this kind of publishing house. But one of the first things that uh, she's tasked with is uh, working with her coworkers on making a dictionary. She she's idealistic and wants to do more, but they start her out with uh, with a dictionary, and she goes from A to Z with her coworkers. Uh, and she discovers or learns about a, a very strange man who she regards as very handsome and, and charming, and they develop somewhat of a um, of a workplace friendship that develops into something even more in what appears to be a, a romance. Uh, with them uh, talking with each other, being playful, and uh, it, it appears that both of them are very interested in in each other in, in, a, in a romantic manner. Uh, but it also it's also pretty clear that the stranger is sick. He has a very nasty cough. Uh, Edna suggests that he go to the um, to the wilds of New Mexico uh, because that's helped other people that she's she's known. But he he doesn't do that, and I think she even overhears some of the coworkers saying that there's no cure for what he has. Um, so it seems like he's uh, doomed in the long term. But that doesn't stop her from being attracted to him. Uh, and they, they begin writing notes to one another. He referring to her as Miss Noah because she referred to him as Mr. Webster by, by mistake. So you got that uh, um, uh, another connection in the workplace going on there. Um, she invites him out, but he ha he declines because uh, he... like. He uh, he he doesn't really want to engage in that relationship and leave her hanging if he were to die. Um, but uh, at one point, um, like she even writes to him and is like, I, "I'm very. If you don't go out with me, I will be very lonely. Like I don't care what else you have going on. Let's 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 
strike something up here uh being very forward but um she you know in the in the case of love like you can't afford to hang back or whatnot is what susan glaspell is saying there and at one point the two embrace and kiss but he still kind of pushes her off because he i get he's hesitant to fully um commit to this sort of relationship and at one point, uh, he even writes her a letter, wishing her luck in the future, noting that uh, there is some love, but he's kind of hanging on a plank, um, and he he feels ashamed to call the, to the shore, because if they join him on the plank, it, it's, it's a precarious situation there. Uh, but Edna realizes that this man does not know anything about women, and proceeds to go through Chicago and try to find him, uh, trying on the trains, not having no luck, and entering into like a cab. Uh, but one of her coworkers, Harold, shows up and encourages her not to go to uh, the stranger's, uh, this man's house, her coworker's house, or her, his apartment. And uh, she realizes that there are probably many obstructions and, and uh, barriers to happiness at this point. And it kind of ends on that sad note there. In terms of analysis, there is a little bit we're talking about with From A to Z. Uh, Susan Glassville providing us with a lot to think about and um, a lot of lines that are, are things that you could ponder over for you know, a, a large amount of time. One of the ideas, um, the main idea that Glassbill is writing about here is that of love. Uh, the, the relationship in this story, uh, it seems to be forming between Edna and, and the stranger, Miss Noah and Mr. Webster, as, as they as they call one another. I don't think we're ever told what this man's name, real real name is. Uh, and I think Edna's name is Edna, but because they mentioned that, but it also seems like that could that could have been someone else's name. Uh, sometimes the story can't, is, isn't quite clear on on like what the names are, what what is what is necessarily actually happening. Like there seems to be something left unsaid with the story. But there is a relationship forming between the two. There's subtle glances, there's there's jokes between the two. Uh, it, there's, it does seem to be a love at first sight kind of situation because when Miss Noah, uh, when Edna sees uh, the stranger, she's like, wow, she's taken aback. Even though he's a bit older, like she's she wants wants this man clearly and the stranger even notes like there's this is a very beautiful woman who should have many callers but none of the other men in this this workplace apparently recognize the beauty that is on display here and so um he is very eager and uh, to talk with her and maybe uh, form something there but he also has uh some hesitation which I'll talk more about in a few moments, but uh, there's a, he, he notes that there's like an alienation there because he like he's around this beautiful woman, but uh, he doesn't want to engage in that relationship either due to his sickness or due to some other kind of strange feeling that he um, he has deluded himself into thinking that like uh, love can't happen because of maybe I'm too old or something like that, uh, and. Um, what's interesting is that, like, even though this this man like uh, doesn't want this relationship to form, Glaspell is arguing that love waits for no one; that it's going to happen regardless, and it'll it'll nest itself in a way that. Um, that maybe you're not expecting because it's going to nest itself. Like love is going to form regardless of whether you want it to or not. There's an interesting quote that I would like to read to you from this. And just there it begins. For the force which rushes beneath the facts of life, caring nothing for conditions, not asking what one desires or what one thinks best, caring as little about a past as about a future, save its own future, the force which can laugh at man's institutions and batter over in one sweep what he likes to call his wisdom was sweeping them on. And because it could get no other recognition, it forced its way into the moments when he asked her for an eraser, when she wanted to know how to spell a word. He could not so much as ask her if she needed more copy paper without seeming to be lavishing upon her all the love of all the ages. And there you have a very interesting quote because it notes that uh, even if you try to reject love, like ignore it and, and not try to recognize that it's there right in front of you, a connection with another person, like it's going to force its way in other way. Like, like it's going to find a way to um, be present. And for the for the two people in this situation, the Miss um, Noah and Mr. Webster, like they like love shows up when they ask each other questions. When they're like, "Can I have an eraser or something like that?" There's knowing glances. There's there's uh, touches and the way their hands, you know, 
touch one another from time to time. Like, it's there whether you want it to be or not. And it seems like Glaspell is arguing that, that like, love waits for no person, that, uh, that love will bound over any obstacle uh, in order to be, to be recognized. And it, life is short, so you might as well not just try to ignore it. You might as well in, indulge in it when, when, it's, when it's there, if possible. Of course, it might not always be possible. Uh, as Susan Glaspell notes, uh, another theme of this story is that of obstacles or the hesitation for for love. Uh, Mr. Webster, this, str- uh, this this strange man, is unsure about committing to Edna. He's unsure about uh, committing to a, a coworker, and we see that there's a there's a couple different reasons. He feels alienated uh, for one, which I think has something to do with his age. He knows that there's a bunch of younger men around. Why isn't she choosing one of them? Why is she going for uh, for an older man? Uh, and so, like he 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 feels like he probably couldn't give her the life that she she deserves in that way. Uh, it also has something to do with his sickness. He might have cancer, uh, some sort of illness that is unspecified. Uh, and he doesn't want to just leave her hanging. Like uh, they might only get six months, they might only get a year, and he doesn't want to leave her heartbroken after that. Which is which is noble, but uh, I, I think Glasswell has an interesting um, counter to that, which I'll get to in a in a few moments. There might also be a sense of personal failure. At one point, Glasswell notes, the narrator notes, that uh, this man was once working for uh, a major newspaper in Chicago uh, before he left, and eventually found his way into this current publishing job. Uh, and it, it just sounds like he's down on himself about that. Like there's a lifetime of maybe not, uh, of, of failing and not deserving a woman of, of this caliber that he couldn't give her the light that she deserves because he's, he's failed downwards into this lowly publishing job. And, uh, again, like, I don't think the woman recognizes that. Like it, does, uh, she's, she's found herself in this position too. And they share that common bond. So regardless of whether this is a failure for him or anything like that, like regardless of whether he can give her the life that she deserves, like she's still interested in him. And there's a sense of, of feminism there where there's no hesitations for Edna. She wants this. She, wa- she, she wants to follow her heart and be with this very loving, caring man that uh, she's um, never really... Uh, she's never really experienced that kind of love before, but uh, as 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 he writes a letter to her, like she's a, a strong, confident woman, and the university education system couldn't like beat that that out of her or something like that, uh, and it especially couldn't tell her that she's not supposed to fall for men like him, men who are not long for this uh, for this planet. Uh, and when she reads the letter, she gets kind of upset. She's just like, oh, this is another man who thinks she who thinks he knows what's best for her. And although it's not very maidenly to chase in matters of love, it, it doesn't pay to be maidenly. Uh, and there's a bit of feminism there in that it's okay to chase men, especially in matters of love. Like, it's okay to follow your heart and make the first move, especially if a, if a man is, is too scared to, to make that move him, himself. And to make and to further elaborate on that, like Susan Glasswell has this woman like go to uh, or try to go to his apartment, his place of where he lives. Uh, but one of her other coworkers stops her. Another again, another man, another uh, another a symbol of the patriarchy trying to stop her and, and saying that it knows best than what she feels in in her heart, uh, which uh, is that traditional like Glasswell. Um, uh, kind of shine right there, where she's she's telling a very beautiful story of a w- wonderfully written story and incorporates elements of her of, of feminism and uh, you know just just being um, being true in in the way that, that the world is that sometimes men do think they know better than women and, and uh, like put off like smart moves like following falling in love and uh, or even sensible moves like that because they think they know what's what's uh what's best but as this woman knows like she she'll pay any price which which struck me you know, when i read that like she's she'll pay any price for love it doesn't matter how big or how small even if she only gets a couple months with this man before he dies a year at the most like that's better than not having been in love at all. That's better than not having someone to embrace. Uh, it, again, it's better to have loved and lost than to not have loved at all. And Glasswell's not necessarily original in saying that, but in how she chooses to say it, it 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 um it really knocks you back, and it uh, it comes off as very sincere. 
Glassbill also seems to be making a commentary on publishing, uh, just noting how sometimes publishers can be pretty shady. And although people sometimes sell like a publishing or a writing job as, as grand, uh, in this case, as Edna finds out, it's probably not so grand. Uh, so I, I think that's a little bit of Glassbill's own uh, sort of background sneaking in, into the story. And although it's not the focus, that element is, is there within the story. Anyway, those were my thoughts on From A to Z by Susan Glassbill, a wonderfully well-written story. The only thing I don't like about it, of course, is that it's a, uh, it, it, it does feel a little bit vague at times where Glassbill doesn't want to acknowledge what's happening to some of the characters in the story. She never outright says it's cancer um, that this man has, but she strongly indicates, and I just wish she would have been more uh, direct about that rather than leaving readers to just kind of guess and and try to struggle to really find out what Glassville is, is getting at, at at certain points. But other than that, the story is, is top notch and wonderfully well written. And I definitely recommend it to you out there if you're looking for a Susan Glassville short story, but also a, a good short story about love. This might be um, something that uh, that interests you. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below or just simply comment on my review. would love to have a conversation about this. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe um, so that other people can find out about this short story or this author if they don't already know. Uh, and also join the Discord if you want to have further conversations about books or whatnot. Uh, and until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and hesitant to fall in love travels. Farewell.